Hello, I'm going to be showing you guys how to change settings on the V2 micro receiver. This is the four channel version. Um, it's buried under there um, and I've depinned it, but it's still, that is the four channel receiver. And uh, anyway, so this is the setup. I have a five volt battery going into a breadboard and then that is supplying power to my range link um, because my USB cannot supply enough power to the range link. Um, and I also will be powering the flight controller from this breadboard. You don't need a breadboard, I've done it without one. Um, it's, you just have to take lots of server connections and use the grounds and the V plus and all that. Um, so it's a lot easier with a breadboard. So that's the setup right here. Um, Before you get into adjust the settings, the first thing you need to do is bind up the receiver to the transmitter. On RangeLink receiver, I'm going to hold the bind button while I turn on my Tyrannus. Give me one second while I put the camera down. Um, it's also in low power mode. Okay, holding the button down, and now I can let go. And the light should blink. That should indicate that it's in bind mode. Next thing I'm going to do is power up the receiver. So let me put the camera down. Basically, I have this breadboard. I'm going to be supplying the um, receiver 5 volt power. Uh, one second. Okay. So I've got the receiver powered, and now there's a solid light um, indicating it is bound. And now I'll uh, shut everything off and just turn it back on and make sure I see the, the like breathing slash flashing light on the range link. That means that it's bound. Once that we do that, we can move on to configuring the receiver. So there's the flashing red light. You might not be able to see it because of the camera's frame rate but it is uh, flashing rapidly, indicating I'm bound with the receiver. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to power up the receiver. Um, the receiver's already bound to the transmitter, so um, as you hold down the bind button, you're going to want to um, power up the receiver and hold it for about a second until the first light comes on. It should be the, um, the solid blue light should come on. Um, if you hold it too long, the red light will come on also. You don't want to do that. So while I'm holding the bind button, I'm going to power up the receiver. And you can see um, the blue light is on. If the red light was on, it would be um, right there solid. Um, you don't want to put it in that mode. So now that this is powered up, we want to switch the transmitter to high power mode. Um, I've unplugged everything from the bottom. Um, when you turn the transmitter on, you want to make sure it's not getting a PPM signal from your Tyrannus or whatever. So this is why I use the breadboard and connect everything separate. So the next thing you're going to do um, is you're going to power it up while holding the bind button. So let me just uh, get my ground and power in here. And then V+. Plus. So I'm going to hold it 10 seconds until there's a long beep and then the light on the transmitter should be uh, solid, I think. Yeah. So holding the bind button down and inserting voltage. So I'm waiting 10 seconds. And then just let go. Um, so this light's solid. Now it's in the right mode. Um, and the next thing you're going to do is connect your USB to TTL. Or if you're using an FTDI, FTDI you connect that. Um, on the FTDI, make sure you swap TX and RX. So on this here, the TX is yellow. So this will go to the RX. And the other one to the TX. And then I'll just connect this up to my USB hub, to my computer. So the next thing I'm going to do is this is all ready to go on here. And now it's all in the computer. OK. So now that we're on the computer, I'm going to go to the range link folder. This is right there. And then the V2.1. And then open up JFPV V1.2. This is the application for the 4-channel and the 8-channel receivers. So the first thing you're going to do is select your receiver. This is the 4-channel that I'm using and the serial port. Um, I have it plugged into my uh, FTDI cable right now and that's plugged into my USB. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to, well basically I should probably explain how this works. So these are the transmitter settings. This is for the, the, the range link transmitter. Um, 
I leave these as defaults. Um, if you change any of these, it'll affect all of your models. You can also affect the frequency or change the frequency right here if you want. I haven't messed with that either. Um, I pretty much ignore this whole box. And then um, for the receiver tab, so in the receiver tab, you can configure what outputs are on each pin. So this is like uh, output pin number one on the receiver. And then you can choose what channel it'll output. So normally, pin one outputs one, pin two outputs two, three is three, and four is four. One thing I usually do is change this to CPPM. Um, this is if I'm using a NAS or if I'm if I'm using like an APM or a PICSOC or something. Um, I'm not sure actually about the PICSOC, but anyways, I use CPF, CPPM a lot for stuff. And you can only use CPM or CPPM or SBUS on output number four. All these other just have um, two through twelve or whatever. So, anyways, what I'm going to be doing on my mini quad is changing this to SBUS because SBUS is fast, and I'm using the revision three. Um, and then also, what I'm going to be doing is on channel eight, I'm going to be using RSSI. I haven't actually tried this yet, so we'll see what happens. If it works, I'll add a thing to the end of the video. Otherwise, I will probably be talking to Sid to figure out how to get it to work, so you guys can figure it out too. Um, the nice thing about using SBUS is that you can have your link quality and RSSI, so I could do channel 7 as link quality, but I'll just leave this on none uh, because I don't need that. Anyways, so that's how you change settings on here. Anyways, once you get all the settings that you like, you can go ahead and click right, and it's going to say that. But um, if you if you look over at your receiver, you'll notice that the red light is now solid. That means that it took the settings. So now that we uh, we got the settings that we wanted, I've got RSSI on channel eight and SBUS on the output number four. We're good. 